Hey, it's Vass here from Aussie RC Playground and welcome to my flight review of the Hobby King Hall Cherokee. Now, uh, I actually bought this plane myself. Hobby King uh, recently had these on sale. Uh, I think they were around about $66 Australian plus a few bucks for delivery. So I think it all up, it owes me something like 80 something dollars uh, delivered to my door, which is a really good price uh, for a plane that retails for a lot more usually. So I couldn't really pass it up and I wanted to get a glider. And I've been eyeing off a couple of other planes, but when this one came up at the right price, I figured, hey, why not give it a shot? Plus it's in EDF and I haven't had an EDF since the uh, Tornado 75 kind of went to heaven. Now, uh, this plane has a couple of different applications. You can tow it with another plane, so it has a little uh, hole on the bottom here and there's a, a release mechanism, a release servo inside um, that you can put on a separate channel on your radio and that can get towed up uh, with a plane such as the Tundra, for example, and then you can release it when you're at a good height and just glide it all the way down and you don't have to have the EDF on there if you don't want to. Um, the other option is there's a little uh, hook underneath here and uh, that allows you to slingshot it off the ground. So there is a mechanism that you can sort of, um, you know, basically like a big long elastic, um, release the plane and um, off it goes into the sky. Hopefully you have some wind and you got some thermals to be able to take it up high enough to be able to uh, keep gliding it for a bit. Uh, but that is another option that you can do. Of course, the third option is to have the EDF that you see on here. And that is the option that I'll be using because I don't have anybody else to kind of tow the plane with uh, with another plane. Um, and I don't have that slingshot uh, option either. So EDF is the way to go. Um, but of course, launching this thing, because it's an EDF, you really do need to throw it. And uh, you'll see that uh, a couple of my friends kind of had a bit of trouble getting used to throwing this plane. Uh, because they uh, use gliders um, that have a, a, a propeller and they're very light gliders with a lot of uh, wing loading and they, they glide really well and it basically just a very gentle throw gets the gliders airborne uh, as long as you have enough throttle because of course the prop wash is going over the wings and you're getting a lot of lift straight away. With an EDF it's completely different. It relies on speed to uh, kind of get its lift and if you just Give it a gentle toss it's just going to nose dive straight into the ground you're not going to have uh, any lift with this guy you really need to throw it or if you're lucky enough to have some headwind that will get you in the air pretty well as well so uh, i'm going to show you the very first couple of uh, flights that i did with this guy uh, just to kind of get it trimmed out and have a bit of a feel of it uh, hopefully you'll enjoy uh, this flight uh, video and you'll see towards the end that i did come across a problem that i will be showing you in the next part of this video uh, how I solved it. So enjoy the first flight and I'll be back here very soon uh, to talk to you a little bit more about what happened. Okay, here we go. Nice gentle toss up. There we go. She's in the air. Pretty easy. Definitely makes its presence known. Yeah. Oh, going into the sun there. Elevator's very touchy. Might have to turn down the elevator throws. Definitely uh, wants to lift as well, so I'll probably have to try and land it and just adjust a few things. So let me see if I can bring it in. This is going to glide forever. Uh, got a fly on my nose. Piss off. Okay, here we go. Throttle off. Where is this going to land? Probably. Really taking its time coming down. Still wants to glide. My goodness. Oh my God, where is it going to stop? <laughs> there we go. All right, let's go get it and do some adjustments. Okay, here we go. Second launch. You forgot to throw it. <laughs> Lucky there's a bit of wind. Yeah, definitely likes to climb. I think I still need to adjust that elevator maybe, or perhaps I need a little bit more nose weight. Maybe I need to throw a 2200 in there. I have seen some videos of people flying it with the 2200. Maybe the 1500 is just way too light. Look at that. Yeah, I gotta point the nose down. should land pretty nice. 
Look at that, it's just sitting up there, even though it's so low to the ground. Oh no, don't you lift on me, oh boy. <laughs> wow. There we go. All right, let's try this with the 22 and see if we can uh, get a little bit more penetration into the wind. Okay, here we go, third launch. That's a little bit better, a little bit more nose weight. And straight away I'm noticing a bit more penetration in the wind. Now, this is only a small 2200, it's only I think a 20 or 30 C pack, so it's not a huge pack. But uh, yeah, it seems to be flying a little bit better this way. Still wants to lift like crazy. So I think I still need to adjust my elevator. Might bring it in for another landing and do a, an actual mechanical adjustment, a manual adjustment on the actual control arm. Even though I've got a, a bit of down trim now, still wants to lift. And here she comes, nice and steady. Come on. Look at that, real nice and steady. Beautiful. How's that? All right, let's adjust this quickly and we'll get it back in the air again. All right, here we go. I think this is what, our fourth fourth launch? Yeah, just straight out that way. And that is a little bit better. So just one full turn on the uh, clevis. And now I can actually go full speed without uh, having too much climb. That's better, here we go, look at that. Nice, very nice. Very nice. The elevator was definitely playing a bit of a, a, bit of a part in this. I thought I had it decently set up, but uh, obviously not. Wow, this thing is big in the air. Very big in the air. Man, it looks cool with the uh, EDF up there on top of it. Can we do a roll? Oh, geez. Very slow roll, but it does do it. Very slow roll. All right, we're going to go over this way. I'm going to actually get some altitude here now. Keeping the sun behind us. Why am I cutting out throttle here? Maybe that battery just doesn't have the power to uh, keep that throttle going. Maybe it's getting really hot in there. There's not a lot of ventilation in the uh, cockpit of this plane. But a 2200 should pull plenty of amps. Yeah, it's cutting out the throttle, so I think I need a higher C rating 2200, which is a, a bit of a shame. Let's check our battery, make sure nothing bad is going on here. All right, battery seems to be okay. It's not even hot. So I don't quite know, unless the ESC is getting really, ah! Yeah, ow, ESC is very hot. <laughs> wow, I just burnt myself. That is why it's cutting out the ESC is all the way back there because there's no room to put it all the way up in the nose. Um, so I don't know what I'm gonna have to do here. I may need to modify, maybe cut a little hole somewhere to allow some airflow into the ESC. Uh, but it looks like um, something has to change in this one because there's just no room in here. There's no airflow going into the ESC, which is a bit of a shame.
Okay, so as you saw there towards the end, the ESC got extremely hot. And uh, this is one of the problems, perhaps the main problem with this aircraft, and that is that there is not enough room in this fuselage to put your battery, your ESC, kind of curl up and tidy up all your cables as well as your receiver. Uh, it's a really, really tight squeeze. Now, what I did to fix this uh, ESC issue is I actually mounted it on the outside. So you'll see here, I've uh, made a couple of holes on the fuse and I'll give you guys a bit of a close up of this. And um, I mounted it on the outside with some Velcro and of course that solved the problem. Plenty of airflow going through the ESC. It's also uh, under the wing, which means that it's not going to be affected by a hot sun. And uh, given that this plane flies mainly upright, it's not really a very good inverted flyer. Um, I think that's a pretty safe spot to put it there. I put it mainly towards the front here. Uh, this allowed me to have the plug kind of sticking up uh, right there, uh, giving me enough room to kind of plug my batteries in as I go. Um, I run a, a 2200 mainly on this guy. You can run uh, 1500s if you want. Make sure the C rating is uh, high enough so that you don't obviously uh, puff up your batteries or get them to run too hot. Um, I didn't do any modifications for any air, extra airflow. Uh, the little hole on the front here um, is enough to keep the battery cool, but of course it was not enough to keep the ESC cool, which is mounted all the way in the back. Uh, this is one of those planes that I think could have really benefited from having a plastic fuselage, much, much like my Trainstar Exchange and my Super Decathlon that I had a couple of years ago. Uh, this one could definitely have benefited from having a thinner fuse, giving you more room to put all your electrics, and of course even allowing you to perhaps do some uh, off-scale extra ventilation um, so that uh, your electrics and everything will stay nice and cool in here. So um, that's really the only problem with this plane as far as the assembly part goes, uh, because other than that, as far as its flight characteristics, and you'll see in this next part of the video that I will be uh, taking it up again with the ESC on the outside, flight characteristics, it's very much a glider. Uh, to launch it, as I said, you've got to really launch this guy, take a couple of steps forward and really chuck it um, because being an EDF, you're not going to have a lot of lift uh, straight off the bat. So you've got to make sure that the plane has some airspeed to get it up in the air. Um, and then just uh, make sure you dial down your elevator because uh, it is quite a sensitive elevator given that the fuse is so short compared to the length of the wings because this is of course 1.7 meters. It's quite a big glider. Um, if you have a very sensitive elevator and you're not used to it or you don't have enough expo in there, it becomes real pitchy real quick and you might run uh, into a little bit of trouble. Um, personally, I like this plane. I wanted a glider. I wanted something that was easy to fly when the mood takes me and I don't want to do any crazy acrobatics. I just have a bit of a bit of wind, a bit of a breeze and I just want to glide and relax and just fly a plane um, you know, as easy as it can be. This one actually does the job really, really well. Um, for your ailerons, I've got my ailerons pretty much at 100%. I've just got a bit of expo in there just to obviously smooth out the controls so that it's not too touchy. Uh, rudder, I think I've also got it at 100%. Uh, you're not going to be able to do any knife edges or anything like that with this plane. But of course, dial in some expo just to smooth out your controls. Um, overall, I like the plane. I don't think it's perf perfect by any means. I think that it has... Uh, a particular appeal, especially for somebody that wants a glider. Uh, this could be something that you may want to consider. Uh, it's an EDF glider, which for me is very different from your standard prop uh, gliders that either have a prop on the front or perhaps a pusher prop uh, on the rear, such as your Bixlers and so forth. So um, that's what kind of drew me to it. I mean, despite the fact that it was uh, fairly cheap to buy, if it looked like every other glider, I don't know if I would have gone for it. Um, I like the fact that it's a bit different um, and uh, even so, the, you know, the ESC kind of mounted outside the fuse doesn't look too bad. I think it adds a bit of character to the plane. It's just a shame that, of course, I had to modify it to uh, get it to work properly. This is something that I think Hobby King knew to address, uh, perhaps in the V2 versions of this plane, or even, uh, you know, updating the current version, maybe getting some extra airflow in there somehow. That would be great. Uh, but that is it for this review of the whole Cherokee from Hobby King. Uh, please enjoy the second part of this flight video. Uh, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up before you go. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. And of course, I will be speaking to you next time. Okay, so now let's try this with the ESC on the outside of the fuse. Okay, one big long toss. Oh, jeez, I'll tell you what. A save and a half. Oh, really? 
Seems to be flying all right now. Coming in throttle off. Hopefully the ESC won't uh, overheat again. I don't think it will. Full throttle. That's about as fast as she's gonna get. Not very quick. Then again, it is a glider. That EDF is uh, not very big either and not very powerful. Does glide pretty well. Looks like I got all my CG and trimming sorted out, so that's good. Ah, flies. Sun's sticking its head out a little bit. Full throttle pass again. Not too bad. Gonna bring it right over the top of us. Ah, oh, flies in my ear. Ah, <laughs> Ooh, I just, I think I just saw a lightning strike. Had a bit of a storm out here this morning but it seems to be really good now. There's virtually no wind at all. It is a little bit muggy, especially now the sun's coming out. It was a bit fresher this morning. I've got a 2200 uh, Turnigy heavy duty pack in there. Really nice shot of that one. Man, this thing sounds, for a glider, it's so odd to have an EDF. Sounds good, just wish it had a bit more speed. But it still gets up on boogies okay. It's not too bad at all. Nice low pass there. All right, let's see if we can bring it in for a landing. I think we've seen enough. I did try to do a roll with this off camera. I don't know if I've got it on camera actually because I was flying it last time and uh, I wouldn't dare try and do a roll now unless I have some serious altitude because um, it's very slow. <laughs> nice, really nice, soft, easy landing. All right, let's see. See if I can do that again. Got it. You really need to chuck this thing. Really need to chuck it. There's just no, not enough thrust to really get it out of your hands. You have to slingshot it out of your hands. Not a very powerful EDF, unfortunately. Cutting power. And I think we might have end up having to land it. Oh, right into the sun. Ah, oh, flies! Get away from me! I was joking to the boys earlier, I think we need to train up a couple of frogs and keep them on our shoulders just to eat away all the flies that are bothering us. Sounds crazy, but if we could pull it off, it would be a great idea. Ooh. Did the flare just a tad too early then. Uh, but there we go. Not bad, not bad. Nice plane to fly. Easy, gentle, uh, it's just unfortunate 
you have to put the ESC outside the fuse because there's nowhere near enough airflow or enough room in that fuse for everything. But other than that, yeah, good fun.